Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Many days of the month of Ramadan have passed. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if so far we have not done anything that he is pleased with, then in the nights that remain, he gives us the tawfiq and the inspiration to do the things that please him inshallah wa ta'ala. In the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave at the end of Sha'ban, he talks about istighfar. This is the month of istighfar. And then he says, فَإِنَّ الشَّقِيَّ مَنْ حُرِّمَ غُفْرَانَ مَنْ حُرِّمَ غُفْرَانَ اللَّهِ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ الْعَظِيمِ The most unfortunate or wretched person is the one who misses out on being forgiven in this great month of forgiveness. And really, if forgiveness is being given to everyone so easily, thousands are being released from the, from the fire of hell, how can someone actually be on the wrong side and miss out? Of course, such a person would be extremely unfortunate and wretched. And that only comes from ghafla, from a kind of absolute carelessness about what is on offer, and we don't want to be from that. So, what does istighfar mean here? When we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we seek your maghfirah, we want your ghufran, what does it mean? Essentially, our imams have taught us that there are three elements. If you want to know for sure that you have been forgiven, without doubt, then the first thing is to have real regret, real regret with all your heart that, Ya Allah, I don't know how I went through so many years of doing this particular thing. This thing I will never do. So regret. And for in many hadiths we have that if the regret is really sincere and really deep, that itself, this nidama is enough for tawbah. The second is a resolve not to repeat. So sometimes we say, okay, I regret what has happened and please forgive me, but in our hearts we still are not ready not to repeat. So istighfar requires you, at least at that point, at that point, maybe in the future, you are not successful in your resolve. It's true. But at that point, you are resolved not to do this again. So, for example, if you have not been praying the Fajr Salah, not keeping the hijab of Fatima Zahra Salamullahi Alayha, not doing these things, in the month of Ramadan, you make this niya that, Ya Allah, forgive me. Forgive me for this trespass. And then at that point, you resolve. From now on, I will pray the Fajr every day. Maybe in the future you slip a little bit, but at that point you are completely convinced. So that is part two. And the third one is you must put right any of the wajibat, any of the things that are due on you before you are fully forgiven. So for example, if you do not pay the homes, it is not enough to say, Ya Allah, I really regret that. And it is not enough to say, from now on, I will not repeat that. But it, to complete it, you have to pay. You have to find out what is your due. If you have never paid homes, you have to find out from the faqih or from the representative of the faqih, what is my situation? Guide me on my particular situation. And then you put it right. This together is istighfar. So this is very important that it's not just something we want to say. Because when you really do istighfar, it's not about getting out of the punishment only. But it is actually opening the door to rahmah. You know, when you do istighfar, you remove a kind of blockage to Allah's rahmah. Which is, Allah's rahmah is always coming out. But it is your particular sins that stop them from reaching you. And when you do istighfar, you remove it. It's very interesting hadith from a man who... Uh, came to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, and he said that he was from the farms and he said, you know, we are not getting any rain. And it's a difficult time for us. Uh, make a prayer for us. What should we do? Now, Imam alayhi salam, maybe you and I would say, pray to Allah for rain. Imam alayhi salam said to him, you and your community should do istighfar. He said, istighfar? Ibn Rasulullah said, yes. Seek forgiveness for your sins. Hope he went away. 
Then, after a while, another person came to him and he said, recently, you know, I have been very, my money is very tight, I have become poor, and also I have been trying for years to have children, and Allah has not given me any child, give me a dua, what should I do? So Imam alayhi salam said to him, no istighfar. He said, istighfar? For, for wealth and for children? He said, no istighfar. Later on, somebody asked him, Ya Abna Rasulillah, different people, actually one person came to him for, where, for water, another one person came to him for wealth. It was a third person actually who came to him for children. He said, Ya Abna Rasulillah, I was sitting in this majalis of yours. Everybody who is coming, you are telling them do istighfar for different, different problems. Imam alayhi salam recited an ayah of the Quran for him from Surah an nuh He says to him, Read in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقُلْ تُسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا If you do istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what? يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا He will open up the skies and water will come down on you. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَنَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا he will give you wealth, he will give you children, and will open up for you all these ni'mat. I gave them the answer of istighfar because Allah says, all these ni'mat are blocked from you because of sin, because of ma'asiyah, because of defiance of Allah. You have defied Allah and you are not sorry. When you are sorry and when you do this istighfar, that is when it comes. So istighfar is, this is the month for it. Really, we cannot be in that group who are wretched and who miss out on it. We have to have it because it is there and so on. Inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us in this. Just a couple of masails as we are now approaching Eid soon is one masail to do with zakat, the zakat of Eid al-Fitr, the zakat of Fitr as it's called. And this is a wajib zakat for everybody who is fasting, everybody who is, uh, every Muslim actually, and what happens is on the eve of Eid al-Fitr, on the eve of Eid al-Fitr, a person has to give this zakat. He has to separate it from his wealth, this zakat, for himself. Also, for anybody who is dependent on him. For example, maybe his family, children, and so on. Also, anybody else who is in his house, really, at that time of Maghrib, who is now his guest for the night, who is dependent as his guest for, the, for him as well. And what is this fitra? It is three kilograms. Three kilograms of food, whether it is rice or wheat or barley or raisins or dates, something that is food, three kilograms of it to reach to the poor mustahik, uh, to the poor Shia as per ihtiyat. But if there are no Shia locality, you can go to Muslims as well, but should not go to the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. So this is something that has to be done according to ihtiyat if you are going to pray Eid Salat the next day before the Eid Salat that you have separated out and you have given it to the mustahik inshallah wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our a'mal may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our Eid definitely though that Eid which is a festival for those who have fasted successfully and who have taken from Allah the benefits of the fast inshallah wa ta'ala والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان عاش بقدسه رمضان شهر عنت لجلاله الأزمان